Any questions on these types of synapses? Any questions so far? Okay. All right. Now we're going to review two more things and then I will open up the floor for any other topics. Okay. All right, so the next thing we sort of talked about were the postsynaptic potentials. This is a very brief review about what these are. So we said that we had two neurons. Let's just draw them out here. We had one neuron, a second neuron here. This would be our presynaptic. This would be our postsynaptic. And so we're really speaking about the influence of the action potential when it gets to this postsynaptic neuron. These are your postsynaptic potentials. Right? So depending on the direction of the change in the membrane potential, these could either be excitatory or inhibitory. Okay. IPSP, EPSP. Okay. So depending on the direction of change, whether or not it was depolarizing or hyperpolarizing, we would have an excitatory or an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So I'll just mention here, the membrane potential depolarizes, Okay, I'll become more positive here. What ions do we usually include when we talk about these EPSPs? What ions? The movement of what two ions? <clears throat> so we talked about the movement of two ions that are associated with the EPSP. Potassium, sodium, and calcium. Perfect. So sodium and calcium were involved here. And we said that if we opened up sodium channels, sodium would rush into the cell. That would increase or make the membrane potential more positive. As well as if we open up calcium channels, same thing. We have positive ions or cations moving into the cell, which would depolarize the membrane potential. Whereas for the IPSPs, the membrane potential change was, so the membrane potential hyperpolarizes, which simply means becomes more negative. And what were the ions involved on this side? So one would be potassium. If we open up potassium channels, potassium would move out, and that would hyperpolarize. What was the other ion? Chloride. Chloride, perfect. Chloride is a negatively charged ion, and if we introduce it into the cell, we hyperpolarize as well. Okay, so the efflux, or the movement out of potassium, or the influx of chloride would hyperpolarize the membrane or make it more negative. And so what we really do is we integrate both of these signals. What was the process that we call that? We call that process something specific. All right, so neural integration. Was basically integrating both IPSPs and EPSPs, EPSPs, at, at what region of the axon? What region of the axon do we integrate all of these signals? The axon hillock. So I'll make a note here. Oops. This region, right, the axon hillock is where we integrate all of these signals. 
right? We add up the inhibitory postsynaptic potentials and the excitatory postsynaptic potentials. And this is where we determine whether or not this second neuron will fire another action potential, right? Depending on what is happening or the membrane potential specifically at the axon hillock. All right, so integrating both the IPSPs and the EPSPs at the axon hillock, okay, and then determining if the postsynaptic neuron was depolarized to threshold. All right, so if this region of the postsynaptic neuron had a membrane potential change that exceeded negative 55 millivolts, then we fired an action potential. If it did not, we did not fire another action potential, okay? All right, and that was neural integration. 